Hey there. While I was writing scripts for videos I'll never make, they just simply would not be acceptable, but in part of one of them I was writing about and thinking about how people have certain attachments to brands. I mean, I understand someone wanting to stick with an electronic ecosystem that they're used to, you know, and they're invested in, and that's a little different. Like, why would I switch to Canon or Nikon when none of my lenses would fit on it, right? I mean, and I understand someone wanting to stick with certain clothing brands because they fit a particular way that they can't find in other brands. You know, that, that makes sense too. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I think about, for instance, the lyrics to the song Dynamite. I'm wearing all my favorite brands, 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 brands. I mean, the first time I heard it, I cringed hard. I mean, I understand media wanting to know what brand some famous person is wearing. It makes me think of another song, David Bowie's Space Oddity. But to have a brand as something to be proud of is weird to me. I mean, I don't understand the notion of someone buying some, like, spending thousands of dollars on some necklace. Oh, look, it's real gold. It's, it's just like, yeah, but why? That's just, it's just a complete waste to me. It's just a complete waste. <sighs> I mean, if there's no utility at all in it, and it's just about, oh, look at me, and it's just like, that's, I don't understand that mindset. I don't get it. I mean, be proud of the way it looks or sounds or performs or, or whatever, right? But, you know, people do things differently. You know, it's especially interesting when you look at how different cultures handle this sort of thing. Some people are seriously invested in presenting the public image that they're made of a lot of money, even if something looks absurd. Now, perhaps some people might say, I do that with my setup that I have here. Look, I, I'm just a video file and audio file. I've, I've, stu I've studied this stuff on my own for so many decades. And uh, if I didn't know how this stuff works, and I used automatic settings on everything all the time, and I got the professional version of everything in order to not really have to think about it that much, you just buy this pro gear and just set it up and everything looks fine, then yes, it would most certainly cost a lot of money to get something that has this sort of look. I mean, I suppose I could shill for Sony, because I like their cameras, but uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But I like to get the most out of whatever I have available. If I can learn some trick to get the image I want, to get the sound I want, I'll, I'll be glad to go with it. Whatever's cheaper that gets the job done, great. Anyway, I look back at especially the mid to late 80s, when there were tons of t-shirts and shorts and sweaters that had the brand name written all over them. You, you, could, you could see the brand name from far away. You know, front and back. Hot Tuna, Ocean Pacific, International News, Quicksilver. You know, at least a dozen others. And then there were the Hypercolor t-shirts. I liked those. I liked the way that they, they put the color on the shirts. It was sort of a monochrome version of tie-dye, but it wasn't extreme tie-dye. It, 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 it was kind of cool. And then, of course, the hue would change depending on the heat sources on the shirt, so I don't know, I just thought they were kind of cool. I wish those would come back. <laughs> but the thing is, most of those brands were inexpensive. You know, wearing them wasn't trying to make some monetary statement. Most of it was just for the fun of it. The 80s were really good about being fun. I mean, some of the brand recognition stuff carried on beyond the 80s. I mean, just look at Levi's and a handful of others. But it has fortunately never reached that same level that it was in the 80s. I mean, it'd be nice if they could do it in a fun way, but I don't see that happening. I mean, how about the Calvin Klein scene in Back to the Future? Calvin Klein? It's written all over your underwear. There's Abercrombie and Fitch that's really expensive. And anything that you find at Buckle will cost, you know, five times what it really should. I'm not saying they mark it up. I'm just saying that those brands are really expensive. There's Saks Fifth Avenue. There's... There's some brands you can find at Nordstrom. I mean, there's so many brands that don't look any better than the cheaper varieties you can find it at other places, but people wear those brands as some badge of honor. Look at me. I don't know. It's just weird. But, you know, I think about the differences between someone who gets a BMW because of its performance and someone who gets it because it looks expensive. I suppose it's an extension of keeping up with the Joneses. It's just interesting to see how consumerism affects different cultural groups. How do you approach brands? Do you care about the brands themselves? 
Or do you care about how the brands perform or function or fit? Let me know in the comments. Thanks.